if our wives ask, we don't even have a GPS. We're up secretly over on our phone trying to find the address, but you know, yeah, baby, I got it. I got it handled. Don't worry about it. It's no big deal. We want to fix it ourselves. We want to do it ourselves. It doesn't matter how deep in the mud we get. We're going to get it out ourselves. We have that I can do it myself mentality. Guess what? That's pride. When we begin to get the feeling that I can handle everything myself, I don't need anyone's help, that is pride. And that is selfish pride because guess what? What we're doing is we're hurting us and we're hurting our relationships with others. Because you know what? God has equipped so many people to help us and put them in our path. You know what's crazy is when, you're, when you see people stuck on the side of the road and they're shoving that, they're trying to push that vehicle off and they're grunting, they're sweating and everything and you stop and you say, hey, can I help you? No, I'm good. I'm good, I got it, thank you. And you're like, yeah, you got it, that car's about to run over you. Let me help you. No, no, I'm good, thank you very much. You may be the person that's on the other end of the car. Typically, I am. I'm the one pushing the car saying, I don't need help. I got it. God puts those people in our path. They're stronger than us. <laughs> Sometimes they know how to fix things. You know what? We have to be able to humble ourselves to say, I need help. So the second type of pride is I can handle it myself. Third one is this. I don't need rules. I don't need rules. I don't have to obey the rules. That's my driving experience. Not for me personally, but for other people. As I'm driving down the interstate every single day on I-65, I see plenty of people who think the rules do not abide to them. They, they, they are not for them, for them at all. Blinkers? Nah, you don't need blinkers. Speed limit? Eh, speed limit doesn't really matter. Oh, le- right and left-hand lane at 60 miles an hour? That doesn't matter either. I can do that because, you know, that's not against the rules when it really is. I don't have to obey the rules. And the world's worse is if something happens on the interstate and the interstate stops and you can see the exit half a mile up the road and you're sitting there patiently waiting because you are going to obey the rules and what happens you see these cars just zipping past you in the median or on the side of the road you know and they're going past you the whole time what are you doing just like, can't believe those people won't believe the rules you know and then what do we want to do zip over there and go ourselves don't we because guess what the rules don't apply to us the rules don't matter and it may not be just driving rules. It could be other things. It could be rules at work. You know, you may have those rules. Well, you're not supposed to do this. You're not supposed to do that. Well, you're only supposed to take a 30-minute lunch. Well, I, I you know, I, that rule is kind of dumb. I'm taking a 45-minute lunch. I work harder than other people. I'm going to take a 45-minute lunch. Or, you know, it doesn't matter that it says I'm supposed to be there at 7 o'clock. If I get there at 7.15, I'm close enough. Or you're supposed to leave at 5. Well, you know, if I leave at 4.30, it's okay because, you know, Everybody else does it. The rules don't abide to us. They don't apply. That's pride. Let's just call it what it is. That's pride. That's, the rules don't matter because I am better than the rules. We come up with ways to work around it, don't we? Well, I work harder. I do this. Well, it doesn't matter about that. Well, that's not really what they meant by, by saying speed limit 70 miles an hour. They really meant 75. I know what they really meant. You know, they were just scared because somebody might get mad. And we come up with all these reasons of why it doesn't matter. Guess what? That's pride. So how do we deal with pride? How do we deal with this selfish pride of I'm better than someone else, I can handle it myself, and the rules don't apply? How do we we deal with this type of pride that builds up in this selfish pride that drives us and begins to drive a wedge in relationships between us and other people? Because guess what? That's what it's doing. Every time you're doing that, every time you're letting pride come up in your life, it is driving wedges between you and other people. And more importantly, because it's sin... You're driving wedges between you and God. So how do we deal with it? Well, it's very simple. In Luke chapter 18, we find a guy that Jesus tells a story about these two guys and how pride fell into this whole situation. And Jesus gives us the answer on dealing with the monster called pride and how to battle pride. It's Luke chapter 18. We're going to start in verse 9. And it's, again, up here on the screen. You also, if you have a copy of God's Word, turn there with me. This is what it says. And Jesus told this story to some who had great confidence in their own righteousness. So very first thing out of the box, what's the matter? They had great confidence. In other words, they had pride in what? Their own righteousness. Now, we all know because we live on the other side of the world now, and we live on the other side of history, we know that no one is righteous, right? Right? Yeah, everyone agree with that? Yeah, uh, I'm a pretty good guy. I'm pretty, I'm, I'm, yeah, I, my righteousness is pretty strong. 
hey, man, this is what he says. says, This is to people who had great confidence in their own righteousness and scorned everyone else. So there you go. There's the other clue. They were damaging relationships. They thought they were better than everyone else. They thought the rules didn't apply to them. They thought they could handle it themselves. Because here's a guy, this person, or people that Jesus is talking to, who had great confidence in their own righteousness. In other words, they don't need God because they can do it themselves. The rules don't apply to me. That whole rule thing that's out, laying out there that guess what? You, none are righteous before God. That doesn't apply to me because I'm building my own righteousness. And I'm better than everyone else. That's why I'm scoring them. Everyone else is lower than me. So he tells this story. Verse 10. Two men went to the temple to pray. One was a Pharisee. And the other was a despised tax collector. I love how Jesus says that. He's a despised tax collector. So far, I haven't known a single tax collector that wasn't despised. When you look in Scripture, every tax collector was hated. Why? Because they were tax collectors, right? They worked for the government. They were, they were, uh, they were considered betrayers. They were considered uh, people that were totally against the Jewish people. You know, these are people that were more hated. Matter of fact, when you read Scripture, and this is one of my favorite things, a lot of times there was a separate category for tax collectors. You had sinners and tax collectors. They were worse than a sinner. So here you have a despised tax collector. What a big surprise that they were despised. They have their own sin category called being a tax collector. Verse 11. The Pharisee stood by himself. That sounds pretty good, right? That's a nice prayerful attitude to have, to be by yourself alone. Jesus talks about that. And he prayed this prayer out loud, by the way. It doesn't have that in there, but he prayed it out loud. I thank you, God, that I am not a sinner. Ooh. Like everyone else. So what do we have here? I'm better than everyone else, right? I'm better than everyone else. I'm not a sinner. Now, is that truth or trash? That's trash, isn't it? Because Scripture plainly tells us we are all sinners and fall short of the glory of God. Yet here's a guy who said, I'm not a sinner. I'm better than everyone else. For I don't cheat, I don't sin, and I don't commit adultery. Now, you notice he left out a bunch of the Ten Commandments right there, didn't he? You know, he kind of he gave his highlights. We've talked about that before, how you, how you like to do your highlight reel. That's, again, that's a pride thing. When you have your highlight reel, you only tell the good parts of your day. You only tell the good, good things that happen in life. You know, you ever gone through the whole resume process before? What do you do on a resume? You write all the good things, don't you? You don't write how many times you've been late for work, how many times you called in sick, how many times you've done the wrong thing, you goofed up, and you got written up. No, you put what a great guy you are, what a great employee you are, and how wonderful you are, and everyone loves you, right? That's what this is. This guy's telling a highlight reel. He's going, look, I don't, I don't sin, I don't cheat, probably. You know, I don't commit adultery, maybe. I'm certainly not like that guy, the tax collector. And then he gets all spiritual. Here comes the spiritual aspect of it. I fast twice a week. And I give you a tenth of my income. In other words, I'm a good guy. I'm a good guy. I, I go beyond what everyone else. There are, most people only fast once a week if they fast at all. And I do it twice. There you go. And then I tithe. How many people tithe nowadays? So this guy was confident in his own righteousness. He was prideful. And it's sad because this pride is directly going against God. Because what is he doing? The whole time he's talking to God, he's not going to God saying, God, I need your help. God, I need this. He thanked God in a very perfunctory way. He said, thank you, God, because I'm better than everyone else. Thank you, God, that I'm not like those people. And I don't think, quite honestly, that he even thinks God had anything to do with it. He's just there praying out loud so everyone else knows how good he is. And the only way he can make it in a prayer is by saying, thank you, God. This is one of those people that otherwise he would have gotten on Facebook in today's world and talked about all these great things he's done. Look at the great cake I made. Look at the wonderful cookies I did. All that wonderful things, right? Verse 13. But the tax collector stood at a distance and dared not even lift his eyes to heaven as he prayed. Instead, he beat his chest in sorrow saying, Oh God, be merciful to me, for I am a sinner. I tell you, and this is Jesus talking, verse 14 says, I tell you, this sinner, now notice, Jesus doesn't beat around the bush here. He calls him what he is, right? He calls the tax collector 
a sinner. Why? Because he's a sinner. Okay? Jesus doesn't go, oh, you're not really a sinner. Oh, it's okay, baby. You're okay. You're better than, it's, it's not really as bad as you think it is. No, he calls him flat out a sinner. This guy is a sinner. This guy is a tax collector. This guy is a betrayer. This guy is going against his own people. This guy is doing things that are wrong. He's calling him what he is. He says, I tell you this, this sinner, not the Pharisee, returned home justified before God. Justified simply means put back right with God. That that relationship with God was restored. The whole reason that guy, that tax collector, went there and prayed was not so he would have attention of people, but so that his relationship with God would be restored and back to where it's supposed to be. That was his sole goal. The Pharisee's goal was to let everyone know how great he was. The tax collector's goal was to get things right with God. And Jesus said, guess what? That guy went home right with God. The Pharisee only went right home with himself. There's a big difference there. And then look at this last sentence, and this gives us our clue. This gives us a key on defeating the monster that we call pride. For those who exalt themselves will be humbled, but those who humble themselves will be exalted. You want to know how to deal with the monster of pride? It's called humility. Humility. Humility is the way we defeat pride in our life. When you begin to look around you and you begin to notice that, that you're thinking, well, I'm better than that person. I look better than that person. Look at Look how they're dressed. I'm dressed a lot nicer than that. You know what? That's pride building up. So what we need to do is we need to combat it with humility. How can I serve? It's a very simple question. You want to know how you can combat pride? Serve others. When you serve others, that pride begins to get knocked down. Because guess what? You learn that there are people out there that while you may think they're worse off than you are, they're really not that you're the same. You deal with the same issues, the same problems. They may be on a different level, maybe different things, but pride will be defeated by humility. If you really want to have true pride and have God proud of you, which is the idea, hopefully, it doesn't matter what people think, it's about what God thinks, then you need to have humility in your life. You need to go ahead and take that next step. For instance, what you could do is very simply this. When you feel that pride building up inside of you and you think you're better than someone else, go out and serve them. Ma'am, can I help carry your basket? Ma'am, I, I notice you've got a lot of stuff going on there. Is there any way I might could help you out? You're looking at your neighbors. Your neighbor's yard is a disaster. You're like, well, my yard always looks better than your yard. I can't believe they do that. Have you ever thought about walking across the street and saying, hey, can I help you? You know, is there a way I might could help you out? You notice that you're the guy's pushing the car. Get out and help. Humility. If you find that you're, you're having a hard time with that, maybe you need to step outside your boundaries even more and go help out in the shelter. Go help out with the really poor. When you begin to have pride building up and saying, I'm better than everyone else, then you know what? Maybe you need to do that kind of thing. If you're one of those and you have that pride build up of, I can handle it myself, then maybe you need to go ask for help. Maybe you need to intentionally go knock on someone's door and ask for help just for your own pride. Oh, well, I can fix it myself. You just give me a little time on YouTube and I'll figure it out because, you know, somebody's got to have it on YouTube, right? You know, there, there's a way to figure it out from there. Why don't you quit? Walk over and ask somebody for help. You know what you're going to do then? You're going to build relationships. You're going to defeat pride because when you do that, when you're humbling yourself, that is when things happen. You find that pride building up about your children? You know what you need to do? Encourage others. When you find yourself wanting to compliment yourself and build yourself up, that's when it's time to compliment others. You know, I've had an interesting time at work over the past few weeks because we have this problem of that we have a lot of, lot of bashing going on back and forth. You know, we've got... We've got certain people in the store that, you know, they don't do their job, and they don't do this, and they don't do that. And what I've had to learn, first of all, is keep my mouth shut. Because it's very easy for me to jump into that pile and, uh, oh, yeah, you're right. They stink. They're horrible. I can't believe we even keep those people around. What are they thinking? Why are they doing that? And what I've had, what God has really dealt with me on is this. 
Hush, first of all. If it's going to be critical, be quiet. And then, encourage. Build that person up. You know, they do a really good job with this type of person. They really do, do a good job with this. And, they're, and that's what we have to do. When we begin to find ourselves wanting to be critical of others, encourage them. Build them up. Humility leads to a strong relationship with God and others. That's the key. If you want to get things right and get pride out of your life, it has to be humility. Listen, humility will do so much damage. Or excuse me, pride will do so much damage in life. Let humility take over. Because then your relationship with God will be strong. God hates the proud. Hates the proud. But he exalts the humble. Which would you rather be? I'm going to ask you to do this. As we finish up today, I'm going to ask you to bow your head and close your eyes for me for just a minute and spend a time, moment of reflection. I want to read some verses to you that as you have your heads bowed and eyes closed, I'm just going to read them. I want you to, I'm going to take my time with them. I want you to think about it. Think about how does that apply to your life. And then as we end today, I want you to think about what is one step you can do this week to defeat pride in your life. What is the area you're dealing with the most and how can you defeat it with humility? This is what Proverbs 11.2 says, When pride comes, then comes disgrace. But with humility comes wisdom. Proverbs 16.18 says, Pride goes before destruction, a haughty spirit before a fall. Chapter 16, verse 19 says, Better to live humbly with the poor than to share plunder with the proud. Verse 29, 23 says, Pride brings a person low, but the lowly in spirit gain honor. You have a choice before you today. You can be prideful and damage the relationships with God and with others, or you can be humble and see God glorify those relationships and build those up. What is one thing you need to do this week to battle the monster called pride? Maybe you're here today and the whole thing about self-righteousness hit home with you. You've been thinking, you know, I've been leaning on my own righteousness for so long that I haven't depended on God. I haven't trusted God. Today's the day to, to humble yourself before God and say, God, you know what? I can't do it myself. I'm I'm not better than anyone else. I'm not good enough, and I will never be good enough. God, today I want to give you my life. Maybe you have not made that step yet, but today is a day. You can do that right now. You can do that today of giving that step to God and saying, God, I need you to be the forgiver of my sins and leader of my life. If so, take a moment and pray that right now. Maybe you're here today and you have been battling with pride for a while in various ways, in various areas of your life. Spend a moment right now asking God to challenge you and to change you in this area in your life. Lord, we come up before you today. And we ask you to help us to see the areas of our life where we have built up pride. That we have let that monster rage inside of us. God, we pray for the strength and the courage to be humble. That we will serve others. And we will encourage others. And we will build other people up. Not for our sake, but God for yours. The others will see your light through us. And God, so that pride will not become that monster in us any longer. Lord, we praise you and we thank you for being so loving and so gracious and so encouraging. And God, we praise you because you 
let us see these sins in our life for what they are. And you lead us to change. God, we commit to that change today. In your name we pray.